Hi there, Laura Dovalo here with an interactive card that I made for Create a Smile Stamps. It uses a mechanism called bell crank mechanism, which converts a horizontal movement into a vertical one. Our current challenge is all about water, so I made the rhino from the fabulous beach party kit swim in the ocean. The kit comes in this cute and practical see-through bag with a plastic zipper. It includes a 6x6 stencil, a bag of sequins, a palm tree die that I am dying to use, a small stamp set featuring a rhino who is ready for the beach, a big sheet of enamel shapes, two sets of alphabet stickers and 12 sturdy double-sided 6x6 papers in beautiful summer colors. Today's card is a result of some trial and error. I don't think this mechanism has been used in a card before. I found it on a website for technology students and I sort of improvised my way through it, modifying some things as I went along. I did some partial stamping to create a bathing suit for the rhino and it wasn't really necessary since you can't see it in the final card, but you might find these uh, tips useful anyway. First I inked the whole stamp with memento ink and wiped away part of it with a Q-tip. Then I stamped it and drew the rest, first with a pencil and then with a Copic multi-liner pen. I also decided to add some horizontal stripes. After coloring it with Copic markers, I added some details with a white sharpie so that the rhino would look wet and shiny. Next, I used the beautiful stencil from the kit and three tones of Distress Ink to create the water layer. Peacock feathers, broken china and tumbled glass look great together and blend easily. It's always fun to lift the masking tape and stencil and I'm sure I'll use this one many times because I love the result. I can't wait to try it with some embossing paste or nouveau mousse or even embossing powder. Okay, now it's time to start on a bell crank linkage. The name actually comes from its first use, changing the vertical pull on a rope to a horizontal pull on the striker of a bell, used for calling staff in large houses or commercial establishments. Nowadays it's mostly used in airplanes or cars. When fussy cutting the rhino, I left the strip as wide as its legs for the mechanism and I later cut it down to about one inch long. Here I'm coloring the edges of the image with a black memento marker, like I always do. I didn't want to get rid of those cute hairs, but they were too fine to cut, so I left them a little bit wider and just colored them black. Here are the elements for the bell crank linkage. Besides the main character, we'll need a circle that's around 4 inches or 10 centimeters in diameter and a pull strip that's 3 fourths of an inch or 2 centimeters wide and around 5 inches or 13 centimeters long. I used heavyweight cardstock for all the elements and later layered two strips for the pull tab. We'll just need one fourth of the circle and it doesn't have to be perfect but you can easily make a template by die cutting a circle out of some thin paper and folding it in half twice. Next I rounded the edges of the strips and the circle with a corner chomper, although I would later have to shorten both strips, especially the one with the rhino. 
I also punched three holes in the circle and in one end of each of the strips so that I could later attach the circle to my panel and the strips to the circle or what's left of it. Now that the pieces of the mechanism are finished, I can move on to the assembly of all of the elements. Remember the stencil background from before? I cut out the waves and added a sand dune to have a nice clear place for the sentiment. Before continuing, let's have a quick look at what a bell crank linkage is. The fixed pivot is going to be a small brad that attaches the circle to my card panel. And those moving pivots are brads that attach the strips to the circle. When the horizontal strip to the right is moved, the vertical strip moves up and down, hopefully creating the illusion that the rhino is swimming in the waves. Here I've attached the strips to the circular piece and now I'm trying to figure out where to place it on the 5x5 square panel or 12.5 cm by 12.5 cm so that it fits. After punching a hole in my panel I can attach the final brad and try out the mechanism. Straight away I can tell that the rhino is moving too much which is totally unnatural for this card. Here you can see what it would look like with the water layer on top. So I decide to get rid of the brad and glue the strip directly to the circle. But first I need to make sure that I'm not hiding it too much, so I temporarily attach the pieces with some washi tape. I've added a piece of foam tape that acts like a stop so that the rhino doesn't move too far. And now let's just put the water layer on top to check if you can still see it. Everything looks good, so I can now adhere the strip to the circle permanently. After adding two layers of double-sided foam adhesive to the back of the water and sand panel, I can glue it in place. Although I will later take it apart to raise the sand dune a bit and to add some color to the white part of the waves. As I said in the beginning, this card was quite the experiment. Okay, now it's time to shorten the pull strip as much as possible. It'll still be quite long, which to me is the only downside to this mechanism. Oh well, at least the brad will allow us to rotate it some, so that it can fit inside an envelope if needed. As you can see, I've pushed the strip as far as it'll go and now I'm cutting it with my scissors. Here's the pattern paper that I chose and now I'm gluing it to the white card panel. You have all the measurements of this card in the description box, both in inches as in centimeters. Now we just need to attach the panel to the card base with some double-sided tape and start working on the sentiment and maybe add a few embellishments. After attaching the alphabet stickers to the panel, I added some shimmer to them with a clear wink of Stella marker and a layer of Nuvo clear crystal glaze to make them stand out even more. I wasn't totally happy with the finished card, so I took a light Copic marker and applied some color to the waves. I also added some foam tape to the sand dune and a couple of clear shimmer crystal drops. Now it looked a lot better, but there was still something missing. To me, it's very important that the person who receives an interactive card knows what to do with it. So I added an arrow-shaped enamel dot to the pull strip to finish it. And that's all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and try out the bell crank linkage mechanism. I also invite you to participate in the Create a Smile Water Challenge. There's a link in the description box. Catch you later! Bye bye!